Tracking more breaking news coming into CBS Sports HQ. Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly is set to become the next head coach at LSU. Our Dennis Dodd confirms. Kelly has spent the last 12 seasons as the head coach of the Irish, amassing a 106 and 39 record, including two trips to the college football playoff and who knows, potentially a third. But the longtime Irish head man is now headed to Baton Rouge. For more on the matter, we say hello to CBS Sports College Football Insider Dennis Dodd. Dennis working the phones for us here uh, throughout the last few days with the coaching carousel in full swing. Uh, the latest news here, Brian Kelly headed to LSU. What can you tell us about the details of the deal and how it's come together? Yeah, it came together relatively quickly, Joe. Uh, you have to remember, I think it was last week that Brian Kelly gave a denial where he invoked mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin, you know, never, never say never, but never. Um, so something happened between now and then, and it may have been something as simple as LSU upping the offer. I don't think he was dissatisfied at Notre Dame, but I'm getting now report, not reports, but I'm getting information now coming in that the deal is five years in length, at least worth $15 million a year. Now we knew from the outset that LSU AD Scott Woodward was willing to pay top dollar for, for a top name coach. The word on the street was eight to 10 years for 100 million. So that would be something in the 12 million range for that. Uh, but if this is the case, it would make him by far and away the highest paid coach ever. And look, in, in business and now in college, look, you, you want the answer? The answer very many, few, or very many times is the money. Um, who wouldn't go for $15 million? And you've got to talk about really quickly you know, the, the academic constrictions at Notre Dame, the, the, there are some. Uh, Lou Holtz had a pretty uh, wide open uh, way of getting players when he was there, but it tightened up over the years. But at LSU, um, you know, I got to think it's pretty laissez-faire. And with the NCAA, basically, Joe, about to step out of the way of all those, situa all those academic restrictions, um, he's going to have a pool, as we know, of tremendously talented players in, that, in Louisiana alone. That $15 million would make him the highest paid coach in college football, but as you put it so eloquently in the break this week, uh, we'll see how it all transpires because it is an ever-changing landscape, and as you put it, changing in front of our eyes right now. What are some of the bigger picture effects here? We'll talk about LSU, we'll talk about Notre Dame, but big picture college football, so much is changing here in real time. What are some of the effects you see in the years to come in terms of these big time deals for, for head coaches, NIL deals, the transfer portal, so much that's changed over the last couple of years in college athletics? Yeah, let's think about this, Joe. In the last week, I can name four coaches who are now making much more than the average NFL coach. James Franklin, Mel Tucker, Lincoln Riley, Brian Kelly. It's going to get bigger and bigger because now Notre Dame has to fill. Who knows wh which way that's going to go. Um, but you've got that. So that has become, for the top jobs, more attractive financially than the NFL. And what is the NFL? It's professional. It's a business. And you're seeing in this situation it tracked towards that way. I had administrators telling me months ago, even two years ago, that they thought eventually we're going to have to pay these players. And as unseemly as that sounds, um, this all stems from that, you know, that Supreme Court ruling in June regarding the Alston case, uh, where the judge said, look, you know, don't come before this court, court with these monopolistic practices again. It's basically saying the players are going to be free in the future to be paid. We saw a version of that this season with NIL. Well, the sky didn't fall. People hardly noticed. It was good copy. I wrote about it. It was fun. But the games were still the thing. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have to go with uh, collective bargaining for the players. Forget about facilities. All they're going to care about is how much can you pay me. And the, the schools and the players in very, in very short order are going to become uh, partners, financial partners. And if that turns off fans, well, it hasn't yet, and I don't think it will, but this is the first waves crashing on that shore. The, the coach is getting played, paid by NFL, like NFL 
coaches. Uh, no doubt uh, the change is here. Uh, Dennis, let's take it on field here for a moment. Uh, Brian Kelly, a storied head coach in Notre Dame football history, the winningest coach in Notre Dame football history. And when you think of some of those contemporaries, it, it is not a statement without a spine. That is uh, big time stuff that he accomplished, just a national championship short of perhaps a statue outside of the stadium. But when you look at Brian Kelly, the LSU head coach recruiting in the SEC, a conference where, have, where we've seen over the last few years, it is Alabama, Georgia, everybody else outside of that storied season with Joe Burrow and Coach O getting it done for the Tigers. Uh, how do you really project him as an SEC head coach? I think I'll keep it going. I mean, you're talking about a guy now who has won at every level, Grand Valley State, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, um, has done something no one in the history of that program has done, win at least 10 five of the last six years. That's never been done. At Notre Dame, that doesn't play in a conference, um, you know, has now competed for a playoff and been in a playoff two of the last three years. And now, again, as I said, it's going to have access to that talent in Louisiana, in the SEC, where you can get in your car and round up your class. Maybe, maybe you go over to Texas. You know, you go over to East Texas. Traditionally, LSU does that. But Nick Saban wrote the blueprint in 2000 when he got there, when he closed the borders. And he proved, if you do that, then you can win a championship here. Les Miles did it. Ed Orgeron did it. I certainly think that Brian Kelly can do it. Uh, we will see how it all pans out in Baton Rouge. Uh, there is a baton to be passed now in South Bend. You have openings uh, with teams like Oklahoma, Notre Dame, these teams that find themselves in the college football, college football playoff conversation that is year in and year out. These are high-profile jobs that are now open uh, give us a few names that you've heard in terms of connections to either of those jobs. I, I know we talk about some of the similar names anytime an opening comes up, but Notre Dame is one of those spots that any coach would love to take the next step in their career. What makes sense for the Irish as they move forward? Yeah, I, I think the, the move that makes the most sense right now is elevating defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman. There's continuity there. He's done a good job in his first year as defensive coordinator coming over from Cincinnati. Um, and it would it would be the best thing for them right now. It, it may be sort of an audition for him to get the permanent job. Uh, name him the interim uh, and let him see how he does with the playoff looming. Who knows? Uh, because the other candidates are, you know, look, I don't think Luke Fickle is coming now. Because he's in the same situation Brian Kelly's in. I don't think he's going to leave Cincinnati now with an almost certain playoff berth right there if they win Saturday against Houston. Um, you know, if, if he goes right now or has some promise to go, then he's abandoning those players. And how does that look? So it's just bad timing. I'm mm -hmm. not saying he wouldn't go in normal times. And then you look at a Matt Campbell at Iowa State, who before the season it was learned, he was telling insiders that, he would only consider Ohio State or Notre Dame. That's as committed as he was to Iowa State. There's reason to believe now he's expanded that uh, pursuit if, if he was going to go. But certainly Notre Dame would be in play if they were interested in him. The only question is, does it fall to him? His season is over. Um, or at least any, you know, they've got a bowl game left, but they're not playing for a championship. So it would be easy for him to leave. Will the job fall to him? And does Notre Dame think he's good enough? As good as what he's done, Joe, at Iowa State, in his six years, he's lost at least five games in five of those years, five of the six. So I'm not disparaging Matt Campbell. He's done a great job, but that's the reality of being the Iowa State coach. And long shot of long shots, Bob Stoops uh, at, uh, at Oklahoma. Problem there, he's got a job. He's the interim coach at <laughs> Oklahoma, so I don't think he's leaving Oklahoma anytime soon. It was all, all, all rumored when he was Oklahoma's coach that he would always entertain uh, Notre Dame. He wanted to go there as a player. Uh, he has roots being back uh, back in Ohio from where he's from, uh, that he always loved Notre Dame. And I think he said so in his book, but I don't think that's going to happen. 61 years old, um, you know, I don't know if he wants to be a full-time coach again. And really quick on Oklahoma, I think we're going to see something break in the next one or two days at the latest because Oklahoma, because of the early signing day, has to get going right away. I'd look seriously at Brent Venables at Clemson. I think this might be the time. He was a coordinator there or a co-coordinator under Bob Stoops for 14 years, left in 2011. And this might be the time uh, one of the highest paid coordinators in the country finally leaves Clemson. The oddity of it all, Dennis, about a week from now, 
We could be talking about a Notre Dame team without a head coach heading to the college football playoff. He's Dennis Dodd breaking it all down here on CBS Sports HQ. We'll continue to track it all with the best in the business. Uh, big business is what we're talking. Brian Kelly, big numbers attached, heading to LSU. Going to try his hand in the SEC after 12 seasons with the Irish, the winningest coach in program history. 2013 BCS national title game appearance, two trips to the college football playoff. A storied, storied time for the Irish, but Brian Kelly moving on to LSU. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.